Generics in C-Sharp are a fundamental feature that enhances code reusability, type safety, and flexibility. Chances are you've already used generics without even realizing it whenever you use collections, but that's not gonna be the case anymore because in this video, I'm gonna explain what generics are, what the problem is that generics solve, and how you can make your own generic collections in the code itself. All right, let's get started. So here I have a bag of oranges. The bag itself has pictures of oranges on, we have nutritional information about oranges. This is clearly a bag intended for oranges. I have another one over here made specifically for apples. It's got a printed label for apples, also has nutritional information. This is a bag just for apples. Both of these bags are non-generic. This one has been designed specifically to hold oranges. This one has been designed specifically to hold apples. So here I've got some brown paper bags. Exactly the same in every way, they can hold anything. But if I want them to be specific, I can just stick a label on to say, this one is for oranges. This now becomes an orange bag where I can easily put and store my oranges. Similarly, I can take one of these bags and make it only for apples or even something like strings or ints. Right, let's see how we do that in code. It's probably easier to understand generics when you understand the problem that generics solves. If we take ourselves back to the early days of C Sharp and we wanted to write a class that would represent having a bag of apples, the class might look something like this. We would have an add apple method, which would take an apple as a parameter and add the apple to the collection. We then might have another one that gives us an opportunity to retrieve the apple from the collection. You might see a flaw here that my bag can only take one apple at a time. That's fine, I've kept it nice and simple. So if we wanted to use this, it would be pretty straightforward. We would instance the bag of apples. We would call add apple, give our apple a name and then put it in the bag. And then we could go and retrieve that calling get apple. If I run this, we see the message apple added and apple in the bag is a golden delicious, just like as what we expect. So this works fine up until the point where we want a bag of oranges as well. If the bag of oranges needs exactly the same functionality, which it is, just add an orange and we're taking an orange out, what we probably end up doing is just copying this code, making a brand new class, bag of oranges. We probably paste that in and all we would do is we would find and replace all instances of the word apple and swap them out with orange. You can already see this becomes tedious really quickly. It's this exact repetitiveness that we're trying to solve with generics. The functionality remains the same, but the thing that it is working on, the type being used is what's different. So let's see how we would do our bag now using generics. With generics, we would just specify the name of the class and we need to specify the thing that is going to be stored, the actual type. The common practice is to always use T to stand for the type, whereas previously we had the specifically named type that was getting used. We're gonna be creating the same methods and properties just wherever we would have had the hard-coded type apple. Now we're just going to be used T, which is going to represent whichever type is going to be used at the time this bag is used. So it'll be public T, item, getter, and setter. We can call this add item. This will be a type T. And likewise, when we return something, it's going to be public T that we're returning, get item. And this is going to return item. Now, when we use this, we'll declare our apple bag. The difference is it'll now be a bag and here, when we're expecting T, we need to specify the type that we want. In our case, it's going to be our apple. And the rest of the code works exactly as is. And this would change to now get item. The beauty of this now is we can just specify the type of object which the bag is gonna hold, and we can just make as many bags as we want of that. So here we can make an orange bag, and there you have it. Or if we wanted to make a bag of strings, we could have that bag holding strings or integers or whatever else we wanted to. 
So this works really well, right up until the point you get somebody wanting to have a bag that you can put cars into. So clearly this brown paper bag is not suitable for something the size of a car or as heavy as a car. So how do we restrict someone from putting ridiculous things inside of our paper bag? Well, this is where constraints come in. You can put constraints on your generic classes to make sure that they're used in the way that you want them to be used. So let's say we had a base class called fruit and both our apple and our orange inherited from the fruit class we could create a generic method called bag of fruit saying the type of fruit that goes in and so we could constrain this class to say this bag of fruit can only take types of fruit we do that by adding a where statement say where t is a fruit syntax is a bit weird i know with this it looks very similar to implementing so if we go back to how we would use this if we change our orange bag to a bag of fruit we say it's of type orange this works the reason it works is because orange is a fruit if we have a look at the class you can see orange inherits from fruit so that makes acceptable to be used in the bag of fruit however if we change our string and we say bag of fruit and we say string you'll see that the compiler starts moaning saying that we can't do it. And if we look at our exception, it says the string must be convertible to a type fruit to be ordered to be used for that type in a generic class. So c -sharp provides us with a whole bunch of existing generic collections. You've got lists and arrays and dictionaries, and there's a whole bunch. If you're running some code revolving around a group of items, and it doesn't specifically matter what the item is, that is usually a really good scenario for a generic collection. c -sharp already provides us with a whole stack of different types of collections. I have another video on that just up here. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.